Okay, question 22. A machine is purchased for $30,000. It produces 24,000 items each year. And the value of the machine is depreciated using a unit cost method of depreciation. So I already have an idea that my formula is going to be something along the lines of Vn is equal to V0 minus D times n, where n is this number of items or units, d is this depreciation constant or multiplier, v0 is my initial, and uh, vn is my final or the cost. Uh, the value, we've done that, after three years, the value of the machine is, oh, a bit of a trick there, the word three years, 18,480, because we said here it's 24,000 items, each year. So filling in this information, we get VN. Okay, so we know that after three years it was 18480 is equal to V0, which was 30,000 minus D multiplied by N, which was my number of uh, units, which is 24,000 times by three. And when I work that out, actually I get my value of D is equal to 0 0.16. That means, therefore, that E is my correct answer because we have V of N is equal to 30,000 minus 0 0.16 of N. All right, And the best way to check it is sub in the values and see if that, in fact, does give you what you're expecting. Okay, question number six. Now, we've got a lot of here of adjacency matrices, and I have to say, rather than looking at this adjacency matrix, what I'm going to try and do is look and see whether I can build stuff up stage by stage. So I'm going to draw my own adjacency matrix. We've got P, Q, R, S, and T, and P, Q, R, S, and T. Let's draw some square brackets, not square brackets, and let's see where we go. Now, P to P. How many ways are they going from P to P? Well, as it turns out, there is just one. There's a loop inside there, and that loop is going to cause some fascinating problems a little bit later on. But we know that P to P can have a 1, and for all the rest of it, because there are no joinings, there is 0, 0, 0, and 0. Now, let's look and see whether that discounts any of my solutions already. Well, actually, C goes, and D is already off. So we've got three left. Where do we go next? What about P to Q? P to Q. How many different ways are there from P to Q? Well, there is one, there is two, but as it turns out, there are three ways to go from P to Q and then Q to P. So does that discount any of my solutions now? Well, B is gone, and in fact, so is E. And before I need to go any further, I didn't even have to fill out the rest of that table. A must be my correct answer. And so, for some reason, my scanner would not scan this question, so I've had to type it up if it looks a little bit different. Don't worry about it. So we've got a project involving nine activities, A to I, and the immediate predecessors are all shown in this. So a directed network for the project will require a dummy activity, and the dummy activity will be drawn from the end of. Well, the first thing is, what I've done is I've drawn this out, and I know that I've got the start here, which is A, and then I've got B and C coming off of here, I have D coming off of here, I have E coming off of here, let's do the arrows in the right directions to get this correct. We have an F coming down here, but I've drawn that as a thick line. We have a G and a H, there is my G, there is my H, and there is my I. And for this to work, E can only start, as it says here, E can only start when B and C have both completed, and so my dummy is going to go there. So it's going to go from the end of activity B to the start of activity E, and that gives me B as my correct answer. In question number eight, we're given a directed network showing a sequence of activities A to S. Now, as you can see, I've already filled in my earliest and latest start times, and it says A to S is required to complete a manufacturing process. The time taken to complete each activity in hours is shown, and I filled it in. It says the number of activities that have a float time of 10 is. Now, what we've got to remember is our float time is given by the latest starting time minus the time it takes for the activity and subtract from that the earliest starting time of the um, what is it, activity. 
Now, what actually turns out is if I take out that floaty thing there, what we notice is there are three of these. And I'm going to say my answer now is actually D. There are three with a float time of 10. How do we know which ones they are? Well, first things first, we know that N is one. I'm going to show you why. We know that I is one and I know that G is one as well. So let's just check uh, the way we know it. Now, obviously nothing on the critical path is going to be a part of this. And so let's just check N. So for N, we know the latest start time was 31. We know it was two uh, hours in duration. And then we're going to subtract from that the 19, which is the earliest starting time, which gives me a float time of 10. So there is N. Let's just check I. So I, the latest was 29. Subtract the seven uh, because that's how long it's going to take and subtract from that the 12, which also gives me 10. And we'll just check G. Uh, let's do it down here. So for G, we've got the latest start time was 19. Subtract the three for how long it's actually going to take and subtract the six for the earlier start times. And once again, we get 10. So there are three activities that have a float time of 10 hours. And here we have question number eight. Jenny and Alan's house is 900 meters from a supermarket. And Jenny is at the house and Alan's at the supermarket. And actually that was the important part of this question. At 12 noon, Jenny leaves the house and walks towards the supermarket. And at the same time, Alan leaves the supermarket and walks towards the house. Now Jenny's plan route is modeled by that. What I did when I solved this was first things first, I actually drew a diagram. So there was T equals two, T equals six, and t equals 10 in terms of minutes. And what I had up here was my distance from the supermarket. And we're going to actually notice that there is 900. So I'm just going to flick through my answers to make sure that I have all of the information I need to save me having to work it all out from scratch again. So what do we find? Well, when I put two into Jenny's equation, what I got was she tra uh, traveled 240 meters. So I just put 240 here and a little kiss. When I, she traveled six minutes, I put it into this equation here, and that gave me 640 meters. So I did a little kiss here. And after 10 minutes, she'd reached the supermarket, which was 900 meters away. And there we go, connect, connect, connect. And that was effectively Jenny's journey. Now, Alan did things the other way. So he starts at the supermarket and then he comes back. And again, what I did was I put each of these values, two, six, and 10, into Alan's equation because I want to see which part of Jenny's graph they cross at. That will give me the time they're effectively meeting and then I can use that information to find out how far people are away from home or supermarkets or what have you. So when I did that, when I put Alan's t equals two into his equation, what came out was 740. So that put me there, it hasn't crossed the graph. When I put six in, what I got out was 420, which put me roughly speaking here. So yes, that is the two sections where those graphs actually cross. So scrolling up a little bit, I now know that I can put 100 t plus 40 equal to Alan's equation of minus 80 t plus 900. Do a little bit of shifting around 800, uh, sorry, 180 t worked out to be 860. And t, when I put it into my calculator, came out as 4.777 blah, 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 blah. Now what that meant was that was the time they met, but that wasn't what the question wanted. The question said, when Alan's distance is away from the house. We want to know what uh, the value of uh, the distance is Alan is away from the house when they meet. Right. So when I have my equation A is equal to minus 80t plus 900 and I put 4.77 in, let's fire up my calculator. What I need to do then is go minus 80, not my minus, no, minus 80 times by 4.7777, and we're going to then add 900 to that if you would be so kind, which gives me about 518 meters. So 518 meters seems to be my answer. And so you would think, well, there we go, I can highlight D. Nope, because that's actually 518 meters away from the supermarket. The question said, how far away is he from the house? So what I do is I'm going to do 900 minus that answer. Uh, let's copy it in. Is equal to 382 roughly meters. So Alan is 382 meters from the supermarket. And there we go. Alan would have walked 382 meters.